I think they ought to stop posturing and acting like idiots. Stop holding uh, news conferences and come here and express yourself here and then vote one way or the other. Now that's an interesting take from Orrin Hatch, whose Republican Party had quite a different idea of how Congress should treat the president when that president's name was Barack Obama. But with Donald Trump in the White House, Democrats, who generally don't believe in total obstruction the way Republicans do, have struggled to figure out how to respond to the rapid-fire Trump reality show and the protests that are sweeping the country, demanding that they stand up to the absolute power wielded by Republicans in Washington. So what should Democrats do? Join me now, MoveOn.org's Karine Jean-Pierre, National Republican consultant Kate Dawson, Democratic strategist Chris Kofinas, and Scott Dworkin, senior advisor of the Democratic Coalition Against Trump. Thank you all for being here. I'm going to start with those of you who I'm going to just guess want the Democrats to fight to the death. Karine Jean-Pierre, I've heard you say it on my air. And we're matching again color-wise, which I think is wonderful. Um, what should Democrats do? Because Orrin Hatch seems to think they ought to uh, shape up and sit down and cooperate. Yeah, it's really it's really amazing to hear because Republicans are when they're when they don't have the White House, there's one but when the Republicans have the White House, it's a whole different set of rules. And if anything, what Democrats should learn from Republicans is when you obstruct, you lose nothing, um, as we saw the Republicans do for eight years under Barack Obama. Look, you, as you were alluding to, Joy, I believe that Democrats need to stand up. This is not business as usual. These are not normal times. This is that moment in history that will be looked back upon. And if you can't do, if Democrats don't do everything that they need to stand up and to stop. Use every procedural power that they have, not much, but use it to stop what's going on. Then we're going to look back at this and it's going to be, it's going to be catastrophic. I mean, we have a, a, a president, we have Donald Trump, who believes that in order to make policy, he needs to target the most vulnerable brothers and sisters that we have in this country. That is not the way to make policy. So Democrats need to stand up. Hey, and you know, Chris Kofina, to that point, I mean, the thing is, Donald Trump is doing, uh, you know, signing an executive order that will essentially unleash Wall Street to cheat their customers without the fiduciary rule in place, saying that they should at least take it, uh, into consideration the best interests of their clients. Uh, you know, all of these attacks on public assistance, which you know are coming, and they are targeting immigrants, but they're going to hurt poor American children. I mean, they are targeting people vote Democrats supposedly represent. Uh, let's look at a couple of what of the things that Democrats are saying. You have Sherrod Brown, Senator from Ohio, on Wednesday saying, "Where is a Sen where are Senate Finance Dems this?" morning standing with the people of Ohio and others hurt by the abusive practices of Mnuchin's bank. That's when they boycotted the Stephen Mnuchin hearings. Uh, Patty Murray of Washington State on Facebook on Wednesday, Democrats are going to keep fighting back. We're going to stand with people across the country and we will keep pushing re Republicans to put par country above party and stand with us. Do you get the sense that Democratic rank and file voters believe that either of those two things are actually happening? Well, I would say that the, the Democratic Party clearly is, you know, strong coming out and opposing uh, Trump. You're seeing that both, I think, at the grassroots level uh, and at the congressional level. Uh, and I, I think there's some obviously some power to that. And, 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 and given Trump's I mean, he wasn't kidding around when, you know, when he was saying what he was going to do. It's clear that he was very honest about I'm going to be an extreme president because he's proving it every day. Uh, and so I'm not sure how you can support that. I mean, and be a Democrat, uh, you have to oppose that, I think, with conviction. I think the, the challenge that we have that I'm still not seeing, we're, we're seeing pieces of it, but our passion is so much into opposing as it should be in, 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 with so many of these actions the, the president is taking. We have to have some kind of clarity about what we are for. And if he's going to be this so-called America first, my, my perspective is we've got to be this, you know, this idea of family first. You know, he's, a, you know, he is attacking the most vulnerable. It's not just in the financial area. He's going to, you know, the, the, the story I remember reading last week was about Scott Walker advising the, the, the White House about going after unions. I mean, this is, the irony is he is trying to actually weaken and attack the very many of the people who voted for him. 
So yeah. but we've got to make that message clear. And, and right now it's not coming out. I'm not saying that's necessarily a weakness yet, but at some point it will be. And, and Kayton, you know, that has always been sort of uh, my question is it, what is the breaking point for the Trump voter? Um, they don't seem to mind that he has this billionaire cabinet. They don't seem to mind that he seems to be really giving huge gifts to Wall Street, who he said he despised during the campaign. Um, they don't seem to mind anything. And so is there a point to Democrats trying to persuade your voters uh, that Republicans are harming American families? Or is, or is that just a waste of time? Should they be practicing base politics the way that your party does? Well, you know, not me to give or the Democratic Party a lot of advice, but what I would tell you is history repeats itself. I mean, go back to George Bush. Two years, we had the House, we had the Senate, and our party got disaffected. Uh, we started spending money, our voters stayed home, and we had to retool and re-elect the president in 2004. Let's fast forward to Barack Obama. One thing that, he's, he, that Barack Obama did that we admired as, a, as political activists and political consultants was he tried to do what he said he was going to do when he got elected both times. Mm -hmm. uh, to our shock and dismay, we lost both times. Donald Trump's doing exactly what he said he was going to do, so I, I'm not surprised. I'm going to throw the politics into this and, and explain to the Democratic Party, they've got 25 U.S. Senate seats up in 2018. The fundraising has already started. They have the opportunity to do a lot of messages, and I agree with the other panelists. I can't tell you what the Democratic Party's message is right now. I can certainly tell you that there's an open congressional seat coming in South Carolina that we've already polled into the base to see, and our base is overwhelmingly supportive of Donald Trump. So when you practice base politics, you avoid primaries where they're contested primaries. The Democrats have 10 seats that Donald Trump won overwhelmingly in those seats coming up. So that the first, the first concern the Democratic Party better have is how to protect 25 U.S. Senate seats with Donald Trump getting stronger in his base right now. Yeah, and Scott, you know, that is the reason that you see a lot of Democrats become sort of cuddly with Donald Trump and are afraid to really oppose him openly because they're afraid of losing their seats because they've got red state voters in their states, especially if they're in the Senate. You run something called Trump Leaks where you're going hard after Donald Trump every single day, uh, practicing what Caton would call base politics uh, at a level that I think viscerally a lot of Democrats prefer. Um, is that a winning formula for a senator? Can a senator sign Sign on to what you're doing at Trump's leak, Trump leaks and win. Absolutely. Um, you know, the, the Democratic coalition, which is the organization that I run, um, you know, we, we, we use Trump leaks as a tool to make sure that we can disperse documents uh, about different people because there is so much corruption. Just Muchen, as an example, he had to pay a million dollar fine. Uh, for his involvement with the Bernie Madoff scandal. These are not people that are nice. These are people that are terrible. These are people that are bad nominees for the most part and are not qualified for the job at all. So Americans should push back against this. You think that we should have someone in charge of our money that was involved and partnered with Bernie Madoff? Uh, I don't think so. And I think that uh, when it comes down to the Democrats, we need to just go back to our base and realize that we're pro-choice, um, that we're pro-gay marriage, that we care about social issues, that we think black lives matter, uh, and that we don't believe that the rich should be in power. That's just not the way that it should work. All right. Well, I wish we had more time, but we are out of time. Uh, Karine Jean-Pierre will be back later in the show. Thank you, Kate and Dawson, Chris Kafidis, and Scott Dworkin. We'll have you guys all back for another round of this.